Welcome to Breakfast Church at Great Hill for Sunday, May 24th, 2020. Many thanks to Shelby Lanero for leading our service and for all our Breakfast Church team for joining in. I hope you'll join our virtual fellowship time at 11.30 today via Zoom. It was a great time last week and we'd love to see you there. Don't forget to bring your own coffee and snacks though. If you need the link, reach out to Maury and she can email it to you. If you need help in figuring out how to attend a Zoom meeting, contact me or Maury Ward and we can walk you through the process so you'll know what to expect when you join a meeting. We're happy to help anyone who needs a little help. Speaking of Zoom meetings, we'll be holding our first virtual church council meeting using Zoom on Thursday, May 28th at 7 p.m. Be sure to check the weekly update and bulletin for that information. Remember, you can join either by video or phone to attend that meeting. There will be lots of information for us to review as the bishop has sent out his reopening guidelines and we work toward the day when we can worship together in person. Please continue in your acts of outreach and support through prayer, calls to the church family, participating in committee meetings online, using these new worship tools, and your faithful support of Great Hill through pledges and gifts mailed to the church or made online. At the end of the service, you'll see a few ways to make sure your donations continue to support worship and outreach here at Great Hill. A big thank you to all who have been faithful in their efforts to shine the light of Christ in these dark times. As a community of faith, committed to sharing the love of Jesus Christ, I invite you to bring your hearts and minds into worship with the words of our meditation. Some keep the Sabbath going to church. I keep it staying at home. So instead of getting to heaven at last, I'm going all along. Let us now bring the light of Christ into our places of worship.
Our scripture reading for today comes from Genesis 19, 15 through 17, and 24 through 26. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation of the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Good morning, everyone. You're all looking lovely as usual today. So today is Ascension Sunday, when we commemorate Jesus ascending into heaven after sacrificing himself for our sins. So you might think, well, that was a weird scripture to choose for today. I've always found the story of Sodom and Gomorrah perturbing, and now that I'm reading it again in my 20s for more reasons than the one I'm getting into today. But Ascension Sunday is about Jesus' promise to us. He sacrificed himself for our sins, and now he's gone to heaven to prepare a place for us with the Father. Today is about our trust in Jesus, that his promise is true. And there's a bit of a trust lesson going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, no? So it's as plain as day. Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. And what does Lot's wife do? She looks back. I mean, this is direction following at the most basic level. Can you tell the semester just ended? But really, come on, Lot's wife. Maybe it's because she never got a name but that's a sermon for another time. So I wanna share something with you that my mom says in precarious situations, though none quite as precarious as fleeing a village and turning into a pillar of salt. She says, Jesus behind me, Jesus before me, Jesus above me, Jesus below me, Jesus to my right, Jesus to my left, Jesus all around me. I've always thought of this as kind of a full coverage protection plan that frankly Lot's wife could have used. So when I wake up in the middle of the night and brave the length of the dark hallway to the bathroom, Jesus behind me, Jesus before me, and so on. In this overwhelming time of the coronavirus pandemic that has led us to distance ourselves from people and instill a lockdown of ourselves and our homes, I got to thinking about my mom's protection plan. What better way to fight an unseen virus than with our unseen but always faithful Lord? There was a challenge going around social media at the beginning of the lockdown, calling those nominated to play or sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. FYI, I'm foreshadowing here. What an amazing message though for such a time as this. While thinking about this challenge and the message behind it, I gained a new perspective of Jesus behind me. While we want Jesus to cover us and surround us when we're frightened or unsure, it's easy enough for us to look in front of us, above us, below us, to our right, to our left. In terms of walking, we can still carry on moving forward, while keeping a lookout in these directions, kind of a double protection plan for the human condition of doubt. However, looking behind us to make sure our backs are covered slows us down significantly. We have to physically turn our heads, and unless we're Linda Blair, our bodies to look behind us. The more we focus on looking behind us though, the slower we progress forward and the longer it takes us to get to where we want or need to be, we lose all sight of what's ahead of us. 
So I've been reliving my childhood and watching Seventh Heaven reruns on Hulu. And I heard this exchange between the Reverend Eric Camden and his wife, Annie. So Eric says, faith without risk is easy. To which Annie counters, yes, but risk without faith is scary. Hmm, the old paradox conundrum. But it got me thinking, we need a certain amount of risk for our faith to be worth it, but we also need faith in order to take risks. The situation we're currently in is all about faith and risk, is it not? I mean, the risks here are clear enough. I think we've all taken some risks during this, even just by going to the grocery store. But we've got to also have the faith that things will be okay. As I'm sure we're all aware, we're at the point where governors and leaders are starting to slowly open businesses again. Churches are starting to think about when we can reopen for in-person services and, as everyone keeps saying, go back to normal. I'm sure we've all probably had this thought, I just want things to go back to normal. We're creatures of habit. We crave normalcy. Even the most spontaneous of us, which is not me, by the way. I mean, how many of you have pleaded with God to just let everything go back to normal? I have. But maybe that's not quite how faith works. So let's revisit that paradox. Faith without risk is easy. But risk without faith is scary maybe our risk isn't even what we thought it was after all. Maybe our risk in the grand scheme of things isn't necessarily going to the grocery store or going to our essential jobs, albeit they are risky. But maybe our grander scheme risk is actually encountering a new normal. How scary is that? So then, having the faith that things will be okay without embracing the risk of possibly encountering a new normal is, well, easy. But embracing the risk of possibly encountering a new normal without having the faith that things will be okay is, yeah, totally scary. So we need both of these things, our faith and risk, to work together. And now you're thinking, okay, sure, Shelby, but how do we do that? You're not exactly a risk taker, which is extremely true, except at the basket bonanza. <laughs> but I'm thinking that the way we get our faith to work along with this risk is maybe by returning to my mom's mantra I told you about. Moms are always right. Like I said, it's easy for us to trust Jesus to be before us, above us, below us, to our left, to our right, it's a quick turn of the head. We can still even use our peripheral vision. But we have to also have the faith that Jesus is behind us. And because of that faith, we don't need to take the risk of looking back like Lot's wife. We can focus on moving forward, and because we have the faith that he's with us, the risk of leaving what was behind isn't quite as scary after all. Now, I know a lot of people are anxious to get back to church and to worship and fellowship together. It's important for us to realize, though, that when we do end up back together for worship and fellowship, it's not going to be our normal worship and fellowship. It's just not safe to do that yet. But let's remember that next Sunday is Pentecost, the day when tongues of fire rain down on the people so that all could communicate with one another, regardless of their mother tongues. We have kind of a similar situation. We can't physically see each other and the people we love. However, our tongue of fire is being used right now. I'm using technology to get this message to you. And yes, it's pre-recorded, but 
we have the technological abilities today to still socialize with each other in real time. It's come in such handy for me. I've communicated with people more often in the past two months than when I was able to actually go physically see them. And now Maury has started Zoom coffee hour for our church family to connect through fellowship. So during this time of uncertainty, unrest, plain fear or anger, we need to put our trust in Jesus. The abnormal is scary, but use your tongue of fire that is readily available right now. We need to move out of this lockdown and pandemic, yes, but as safely as possible and when it's time. And we may even possibly need to rebuild our everyday lives in the meantime. We kind of already have been. Things may go back to exactly how they were before this, or we may enter our new normal. Either way, we need to keep going forward to meet the rest of our journeys on this earthly life. We need to stop looking behind us. He's got our backs. Lord, we come to you in prayer today and ask that in this time of unrest, you make yourself known to each person on this earth as Lord, protector, and savior. As we rush in to an attempt to return to normalcy, remind us that your plans are greater than our human condition. Guide us toward finding our peace of mind in this changing world through your own ser ser serenity. Give us protection and the strength to carry on through this season of life. This morning we pray for our world leaders to give wisdom and discernment to President Trump, members of the Congress, Governor Lamont, and all local leaders as they confront the world pandemic. We pray for all the world leaders that they may find ways to help people around the world. We pray for the United Methodist Church, including Bishop Dickerton, our District Superintendent Sylvester, and all Christian churches. May they guide the people well. We pray for our country and the world as we continue to face the COVID-19 crisis. We pray for those out of work, small businesses, and the greater economic health of our nation. We pray for our servicemen and women, especially Caitlin Kabor. We give you thanks for the military's work during this time of crisis. We especially remember on this Memorial Day weekend the ultimate sacrifices the men and women of our military have made. We pray for the Spooner House and for the Seymour Oxford Food Bank as they struggle to meet increasing de demands during this pandemic. We pray for all those out of work and for small businesses with great room. We pray for the baby Vanessa to be found and safely returned to her family. We pray for all of those working in healthcare facilities, including Priscilla Alteri's daughter, Christina, who is working in Griffin Hospital, Lisa Brown, who is working in St. Vincent's Hospital, Sonny Lee, working at River Glen Nursing Home, Alan McDaniel's son, Alan McDaniel III, and his work as a nurse. We also pray for Colleen Bodick, 
niece of Rosemary Westhaver, a nurse at the New York Presbyterian Hospital ICU for COVID, COVID patients. We pray for wisdom, courage, and compassion for all doctors, nurses, volunteers serving in the medical field. We pray for those who need God's physical healing and strength. We pray for those with cancer. May they receive the care necessary to their struggle. May all those in the hospital receive your healing. We pray for the for the 10-year-old nephew of Brenda Hogue, Zayden, who was hit while riding his bicycle in Ohio on May 15th. He is currently in a trauma unit. We pray for Dan continuing his cancer battle. We pray for Donna Marcus's mother, Beverly, and for her father, Donald, both recovering from coronavirus in a rehab center. We pray for the health and safety for all those who are working as essential services during this difficult time. We pray for those volunteers who are sewing uh, masks and necessary equipment for others. We pray for those who continue to work outside their homes, Katie Newberg, Alex Marcus, Victoria Bradshaw, and Alan McGano. We pray for our Shuttons, Shirley Green and Joan Ford. May they know, know they are in our prayers. We are also we also pray for families, especially those with children who cannot understand why their lives have changed so much during this pandemic. We pray for encouragement and comfort for Justin Calabrese and all young people feeling down because of the need for social distancing, the end of school, and separation from their friends. We pray for all those shut in and suffering from anxiety and depression. We pray for comfort for all those who are grieving, for the family of Mac Roz and for the family of Bob Farmer, cousin to Priscilla Alteri. We pray for God's comfort, special care, guidance, and strength for Bill Kerhofer, grandson of Eleanor Skeevy. We pray that we will be a source of support and encouragement to others. Remind us of the opportunities to call and email others. This week, we pray for our Great Hill families, Craig and Maria, Stacy and Ryan Tuttle, Helen Wallace, Jim and Maury Ward, Jeff and Prudence, Chloe and Jeffrey Weaver. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
friend, as we continue to grow weary and restless during this time of pandemic, may we remember God's endless patience with us and give us back a fraction of the patience to him as he covers us with safety to get us through this. While we are anxious to return to what was, let us put our faith in God to guide us to what will be. He will not let us falter. In his hand are depths of earth and in the mountain's peak belong to him. Be safe, be well, be mindful, and happy Memorial Day. Though the light of the candle may end, the light that is Christ lives on in us always. And remember, he's got you and the whole world in his hands. Happy, Happy Memorial, Memorial Day! Day.